Pythagoras was a bit of a big shot. He was the head teacher of his own mathematics school thousands of years ago. One day, one of his pupils found out something he didn't really like, so he had the pupil executed. Imagine if your head teacher did that to you. Pythagoras found out a lot of useful maths, the most famous of which is called Pythagoras' theorem. You might know that as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagoras' theorem is all about right angle triangles. What Pythagoras found is that the area of the square with side length A add the area of the square with side length B is equal to the area of the square of side length C. In right angle triangles, we, we call this longest side the hypotenuse. It's always opposite the right angle, and in questions, you should normally label this side C. So the people with orange paper, they represent the square of this side here. The people with white paper, they represent the square of this side here. When we add the two squares together, they should give us perfectly the area of the square of the hypotenuse, here. And we can see perfectly that all of our pupils fit nicely into the square of the longest side. Now you're probably thinking, why is this useful? Now imagine if a ninja's girlfriend has been captured not only captured, but she's guarded by lasers. The ninja has to come and rescue her. He cannot cut through the lasers, so he has to go over all of the obstacles, shimmy along the wall, do his ninja thing, finally get to his girlfriend, disarm the lasers, and then take his girlfriend and rescue her off to safety. Now I know what you're probably thinking. How far would it have been if the ninja hadn't shimmied around the walls, but he just crashed diagonally through the lasers. Well, we can use Pythagoras to find out. First of all, we label our two shorter sides A and B. It doesn't matter which way around. What is important is that you label the longest side, in this case the diagonal, opposite the right angle, C. Okay? Then we write down our formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we substitute these values into that formula. So we have 2.5 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, the square of the distance the ninja would have to travel diagonally. If we evaluate these numbers, 2.5 squared gives us 6.25, and 4 squared, 16. We can add these two numbers together to find the square of the hypotenuse is equal to 22.25, and that would be as in metres as that is as well. So, what number multiplied by itself gives us 22.25? We can square root 22.25 to find out. To do that, you need your calculator, and rounded to two decimal places, it gives us 4.72 metres. That is the distance the ninja would have had to travel through the lasers to rescue his girlfriend. At Alderbrook, we've got two future England regulars, Matthew Hill and Joe Fletcher. Matt wants to play a 40-yard diagonal cross-field ball to Joe, who stood exactly 20 yards level to the left of him. Joe wants to know how far does he need to run to perfectly intercept that ball. Let's see the pros in action. Again, we can use Pythagoras to find out. The only difference this time is we're not trying to find the longest side, we're actually finding one of the shorter sides. Now it doesn't matter which one you're trying to find, the process is still the same. First of all, we label the sides A, B and C as we did last time. Then we substitute those values into our formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, this time we don't know what A is, but we know that A squared plus 20 squared is 40 squared. If I evaluate those numbers, 20 squared is 400, 40 squared, 1,600. So I know that A squared plus 400 is 1,600. If I take 400 away from this, I can find that A squared is equal to 1,200. Again, if I take the square root of 1,200, I'll find the value for A and be able to tell Joe how far he needs to run forward to intercept that pass. This time, it's 34.64 yards, because this question was in yards, and that's rounded to two decimal places. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'd like to say a thank you to the fantastic Year 8s who made it possible.